In this video, we're going to make a rubber ducky using the Fusion 360 form environment. This is Brian Galassa. Um, when you first get there, like I mentioned, there's this little waffle that's your browser. Um, just to kind of clarify, in um, you, your browser typically looks like this when you start up. And you can make new projects, and that opens these little kind of bars. So I've got like all CCA. And um, I'm going to add another folder and invite you guys all into it, uh, but I'm going I'm to wait to do that just because then I can go and look at your models, which is really nice. So, but let's just start off with this first one uh, as regular. Um, and then if, you, if you're in your folder and you want to make a new folder, click this icon. Um, and, but right now, let's ignore all of this. And then down here, you might have this multi viewports on which is just a little clunky, and they suggest that you just go to single view. Uh, that's down here. Some of your settings may be different than mine. I've got this little plugin over here that you don't have. Um, I've added some more things to some of these because, like for example, any of these options, uh, I can hover over this three little dots and click on that, and it says pin to toolbar or pin to shortcuts. And so I've done that on a couple things that I use regularly. And so you might, your icons may be different up here, but all of them are available under all of these tabs. So everything, I try to um, use this, uh, the, the menus this way so that you guys can be familiar with it. Just don't worry if they're not the same up here. All right, so Fusion um, works, oh, and actually, sorry, let me finish what we were doing here. Under preferences, under general, um, down here, pan, zoom, orbit, shortcuts. I have mine set to Tinkercad because that was similar to the way I've learned shortcuts, uh, closest one. If you've used SolidWorks before, you might want to choose SolidWorks because uh, then it will be more familiar and all these other options. Um, let's get out of there. Um, Fusion is an online program, and so sometimes this job status one, uh, if you click on that, it says working online. I can work offline, but I need to get back online to upload my models. Um, and sometimes, you, you, like if your uh, Wi-Fi is bad or if it goes out or something, it'll, it'll have a little red icon saying, working offline. Don't worry about it. It'll reconnect when you're set up. Um, okay, so there's... There's a, kind of, there's a lot going on here, and let me see if, because I was confused by some of this, let me see if I can just really clearly lay out. There's basically two different modes, capturing design history and not capturing design history. This little um, play bars down at the bottom right-hand corner, if you see those, that means you are capturing design history, and for the most part, we're gonna leave it on that setting. If you don't see these little play bars down here, if you go up to your, uh, top menu in this browser and right click on that, way down at the bottom, it will say capture design history instead of do not capture design history. So the design history will allow you to go back in time and change something that will update over the whole thing. So it's very powerful, um, but it doesn't necessarily always show up that way. So once again, if you don't see these little um, playheads, Go up to your, to your uh, little browser, which may look like this. You can open it up, right click on it, and go down to the bottom and say, capture design history. And then you'll be in the same place. And it says unsaved, and so it's always a good habit to save what you're doing before you even start doing anything. So we'll just call this Ducky. I'm gonna call him Ducky 2 because I've done other ones. Um, Actually, um, yeah, I, I, you could just, um, if you uh, save it to my projects, I think that will be your default, maybe. I don't have that option, so uh, Let's see. So I 
I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and first set up this folder just so you guys are, uh, can open up my model. So I'm, um, I'm going to make a new folder in all CCA called Metacad. You don't have to do this right now. And I'm going to share that with you later. I just want to get rolling right now. So uh, I I'm. Like no, you're not yet. No, yours it should just be uh, unpopulated. Um, so. This is like the cut it. So there it is. Okay. I, my uh, screen is much bigger than that you're seeing. It's reduced for this uh, screen sharing. And sometimes the buttons are off the edge and you can't get to them. Um, okay. So let's get started. So has everybody got this little play bars down at the bottom at least? All right. Now, so that's one mode of working. There's kind of, there's just basically those two. Uh, direct modeling or design history. Um, then up here, you'll notice I've got these upper tabs, solid, surface, mesh, sheet metal, plastic, utilities. And you may not have all of these. Um, mostly, we'll be working in this solid environment, which is the first tab. And you'll see that little blue bar under it highlights. And then there's, in the solid environment, there's the uh, form environment. And then there's these kind of uh, solids or whatever. We're mostly going to be working in this form environment. So I'm going to click on this little icon, the purple icon. And you'll notice once I click on that, now it gives me a whole bunch of purple icons. So I know I'm in the form environment. This is where you may have some different um, ones showing on your top bar. Don't worry about that. They're all underneath in these menus. Um, and for pretty much they try to separate everything logically into creating and modifying. And so like first what we're going to do is create a form and then we're going to go in and modify the form. So under create, um, we're going to go to this one called a quad ball. And this is basically just a spear. And notice when I do this, and again, a lot of this I'm trying to reiterate the stuff that confused me because they don't necessarily clearly tell you the first thing I need to do is select one of these planes. I can't make the sphere until I've chosen one. And usually I just choose this, uh, like basically the floor plane. You should see some grid sort of like this, but you may not. Um, and then once I've done that, I'm like, where's my ball? Well, I've only selected the plane. That's the first step. Second step is to select a place where I'm going to start this. And it's a good habit to start on the origins, which is this green and red crosshairs. Click on that very center, and there's my quad ball. And um, I'm not sure, I'm not really good at millimeters. So one thing I can do, let's see, I'm gonna make a little rubber ducky, right? So they're about maybe four inches tall, so the head's maybe two inches. So even though this says millimeters, I can type in two I N. And then I've got this next um, option on the thing. And I'm going to pause in a minute and make sure everybody's up, up to speed here. Um, uh, notice, what was that? Oh, I, I thought an interface that said, that gave me the, the option to specify the diameter, but not the bottom two options. Uh, floating windows move around. So especially on a big screen, here's my quad ball options. Notice also I can close these. I couldn't find some of these because they were closed and then you got to open them up. 
Um, okay, so we had a two-inch quad ball, and I'm trying to remember if we did, I think this is what we did. So, and then just no symmetry for now, and I'll hit okay. All right, so a quad ball is kind of an interesting thing, and I'm gonna, um, you don't have to do this part, I'm just gonna show you what the difference is. I don't know why they have a sphere option, because it's basically broken. So let's just make a sphere over here. And so this is called a quad ball, and this is a sphere. And if I grab this point, and we'll get here in a second, again, just watch, don't have to follow along, I can move this upper point around, right? So that seems cool, all right. Now if I grab this central point on the sphere, it doesn't work. So I just almost always avoid using a sphere unless I'm doing something different up at this, like I might, like for those pumpkins, this would be, I think I might have started with this because I got rid of the top. Anyway, so the quad ball is kind of a weird thing, but the way this program works is it, this is a weird word, but it prefers four-sided panels. So this has got four sides to it. And it prefers four-way intersections. So this is one, two, three, four. It will deal with a three-way intersection. That's three over there. Um, but it really does not like a three-sided panel. And I'll try to explain the reasonings as we go, but um, so this is made up of a bunch of four-sided panels, even though there's some three-way intersections, so this is actually a better um, object. So this is gonna be the head of our little ducky. And now we're gonna make, um, I think in my video I did this with two spheres. I'm gonna just show you some more tools. So the second um, thing I'm gonna click on is create, and instead of a, a quad ball, I'm gonna choose a box. And I'm gonna choose that same bottom plane, and I'm actually gonna just choose that same center, and I should be able to see through there and click on that center, and then pull out, um, boop. And there, let's see, I want, um, so I'm gonna move this down in a minute, but I want, and, and for reasons you'll see in a minute, um, I want one more panel in this uh, longitudinal direction. And so I can either do that through these dialog boxes or I can also do it through these little sliders. And you can kind of see this slider um, is along that axis. And, and so I could just do this. This is one of the reasons I like it is this, it's got all these visual ways to, man, uh, to adjust this. Because sometimes, you know, length, 71 millimeters, like, I don't know what length it's supposed to be. Should I try 80? Should I try, but here I could just visually grab these and you'll see that length now is changing. So this is gonna be a little bit purely visual. Um, let's see, one, two, one, two. Sorry, I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. I'm gonna actually, yeah, I'll stop with that, okay. Uh, so it's basically, if you look at the, the, the box, dialog box, you see it's got um, three length faces, two width faces, and two height faces, and or, like I said, you can do that. So this is gonna be, we're gonna move it down, uh, but it's gonna be his body, so it needs to be, you know, kind of a, um, bigger than the sphere, but not necessarily wider, maybe a little wider. And we, we can adjust this all later. Okay, so we got these two pieces, and now I want to move this one down. I could turn this upside down, but I want to move this one down below. And so the easiest way to do that is to double-click just any one panel, and the whole thing will highlight. And then under Modify, the very top um, option is Edit Form, and it's also just the letter E shortcut on your keyboard. So I'm gonna do that through the shortcut and just show you. So double click and E. And I get this little, uh, I call it the triad, but I have to forget what they call it. It's this little navigational thing that allows you to, in this case, 
move, you know, left or right, up or down. Um, these square panels will let you move instead of just one, di two directions in that dimension. And then these bars are for scaling. For example, if I saw this and I said, you know, I just need a little bit wider, I could either use this bar to stretch it the width out, or I could actually also use, uh, oh, it's actually doing both. See, it's the vertical and horizontal are connected in this case. And so I, whoops, I didn't want to move it. And I think that's where I want to stop for a second and come around and check to make sure you guys are with all there. Google uh, uh, mod uh, enable shortcut in Fusion 360. Yeah. All right, so um, one thing I am going to do now, this is obviously not quite a duck yet, um, but I want to bring in some reference because I've done this a couple times and it looked really wonky and then I brought some reference in and I was like, oh, yeah, I was way off. So just for a minute, I'm going to go over to Safari and find a... Find a good kind of side view picture. I'll go to images. Um, and there's something kind of interesting is the proportions, like this guy here, his head looks like it might be a little too far forward, so when you put him in the water, he might tip forward. So in reality, the, the head is kind of back a little bit further than you just initially think. Um, so I want a good side view of a good rubber duck. And you'll notice there's a lot of varieties out there. And we're gonna do a super simple one without wings or anything. Let's see, come on. How could this be so hard? Hmm. That's a good side view, but it's kind of gross. Here we go. That was a good side view. Okay, so I'm going to download this, save image to downloads. And now I'm going to jump back over to Fusion. And I want to use that as a kind of a, a canvas underlay to work off of. And since I had I already kind of got a basic scale with the head, I'll just scale it up to the head size. So what I want to do is I want to go to Insert, Canvas. So that should be way down at the end in, there's some little bars separating stuff, but um, I don't know if you can have the same things, Construct, Inspect, Insert. And then I want to choose Canvas option. And then it's going to ask me from where, so from my computer. And then I got to go to my um, to downloads. 
which it could be a sketch or a drawing or whatever you want. Uh, so I'm going to open this up. And then same thing is it's saying where. And so if you notice on the this little canvas dialog thing, it's saying face select. If you ever see this little blue arrow thing, that's what it's asking you to do next. And so this is the plane or face that I'm going to choose. And then notice it's super small, so I'm going to scale this up with this little corner icon until the head is roughly the same size as my object. And then I can, whoops. And one thing you can do is see canvas opacity, you could turn this up or down. I think 50% is fine. And you might want to flip it horizontal, vertical. I think this is fine, so I'll just deal with this. And then um, on the um, uh, this little navigation cube, if you click on one of the panels, you can see I can rotate it around. If I just click on it, it should go to uh, a side view. And I have, you'll notice, uh, I think it's in here. So look at look up just for a second. If you click on this display settings and go up to camera, and if uh, most of you guys might have this on just perspective, I like this perspective with ortho faces. And what happens there is if I start turning this, you'll notice it pops into 3D, but when I want to look at an orthographic view, it snaps into orthographic view. So this is really good for trying to match up stuff like this in a side view. <clears throat> Um, so, let's get this lower body looking a little more ducky-like. So, first step I'm going to do from the side view is I'm going to double click on that again, go to um, Modify, Edit Form, and I'm going to push the base of this down to the base of the ducky, roughly, get this kind of centered. <clears throat> And maybe I'll fluff them up a little bit by stretching it with that little bar. This is the, so I could either move this, you know, just left and right, up and down, or with this little square, I can move it in 2D and these two planes that are visible. Um, return. Okay, now I, I almost clicked on this by accident. Notice down in the timeline, I've got like a little purple box. This is the form that we're working on in the timeline because there's other operations we could do. If I, this screwed me up also, so I'm gonna explain this to you. If I click on finish form, I'm not even done with this, but if I hit finish form, you'll notice that these change into manufacturable surface is called B-Rep. You don't have to know why, but so this is um, stuff I could 3D print or do um, machining from or whatever, but I'm not done with it. And now I can't edit those surfaces. So if you have somehow inadvertently escaped out of the um, form environment, you'll notice if I go back to this little purple icon and right click on it, I can go back to edit and then it gives me my edit ability again. So if, if that happens to you, that's how you get out of there. All right, so now I probably should have a top view of the duck, so, and I could place that on this form, but I think I can just manage this by myself. So first step I'm gonna do is, um, let's turn on some symmetry on both of these. So I'm gonna go to uh, this up on the top here, symmetry. Click on mirror internal, and you just want to click on two panels that are on opposite sides of your symmetry line. So that side and that side. So now I got a little green line down the middle. That means I've got symmetry on. And then um, I think I can only do one object at a time, so I got to say OK. And then I'm going to repeat on this top one, left and right. Okay, and what that allows me to do is if any modifications I make to one side, it will update to the other side. So uh, I want to merge these together, but I'm going to first get the ducky body just a little bit more ducky shaped. And so now this gets the weird part. <laughs> so I'm going to show you what 
the underlying structure of this is. This is a mathematical um, uh, shape that's really generated from these two. So this is, I call box mode. And um, I actually forget how to find this without the, cause, so and on your, if you're on a Mac, if you click on any one of your objects and hit control, not command, control one, it should go to this and control three should go to the smooth mode. Control two will show you kind of both uh, at the same time. So what, what's happening is you're actually just building these very few points in space which are these little points. And then it's softening everything. Think of this as if I built this pipe structure with all these straight tubings, and then there was some soft thing that's being influenced by that. There's little uh, strings pulling on all those corners. Um, so for example, if I, if I clicked on this point and moved it up, you'll see it's not moving with the point, but it is influenced by, so I can get this like way high up and this is just being subtly influenced by it. Um, so this takes a little bit of just working with this to get used to it and to understand what it likes and what it doesn't like. Yeah, so if you first you have to click on the object and then control on your keyboard, control one is box mode Control three is smooth mode. And um, let me see, I, there's somewhere, I, I use that so much, I actually don't know where the, um, where you find those in the menu. Uh, through uh, so I, I first I downloaded it and then in insert canvas is where I started from and I'll come around and help you in a second um, so I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> where do you find those uh, inspect insert Yeah, I'll, I'll have to do some sleuthing, but if, if that doesn't work on your keyboard, so can, here I've got box mode on Ducky. If I go control uh, three, I should get the smooth mode, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this in box mode is why I was showing you all this, because control one. You'll notice that even though it's got these soft corners, it's, it, it looks like a box, right? So if I thought of, if I built that Ducky body out of a bunch of flat panels, um, what would I start with? Let's say I'm gonna just build an underlying structure and then bondo over it, or build an underlying structure more likely and sand off uh, some of the corners. So I've got symmetry on, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna grab this edge and just holding down shift, I'm selecting these two front vertical edges and I'll use the modify again, edit form. And I'm gonna just pull those inward a little bit And then um, I'm gonna connect his head more forward. So I'm gonna grab th this loop by double clicking on one part of it, hold down shift, double click this loop. And now I've got two loops selected and I'm gonna push those forward so it's a little more offset. Now the back really tapers in. So I'm just gonna grab these two. And again, I'm gonna stop in a minute and I'll come and check on you and push those in. All right now, I probably want the equator to be just a little more puffy, right? So I'll double click this loop and this very central icon enlarges everything all at once. So I'm gonna use that to kind of puff out the midsection of the body. And then the front kind of droops down. So I'm gonna grab this and just maybe pull this down 
And this one, we'll add the little tail later. And notice here, because I've got reflection on, I really only need to grab um, one half. Okay, so bottom's flat. So it kind of looks like a computer mouse. And then let's just check this in smooth mode now, control three. And it's closer. But now, now that I've kind of get the basic setup, I'm gonna pull this in a little bit more. Um, go back to box mode because it's a little clearer, so control one. You can see there, there's just one panel on each side of the symmetry line. On the lengthwise, I have three panels, but let's say I wanted more, and I could do this in either mode. Let's go back to smooth just so you, whoops, control one, three. Um, so if I want to add another um, loop in here, we'll call it. So notice that like this, if I double click it, it goes all the way around, so it gets all of it. This one also is a loop. It goes all the way around. But this one is an edge, so if I double click it, it only grabs those two pieces. It doesn't create a full loop. Um, same with over here. If I double click this one, it's just an edge. And again, on box mode, you can kind of see that a little better because it dead ends into this three-way intersection. But this one is a full loop, that one's a full loop, and the one in the center is a full loop. Now if I click on this one, it will go to the next three-way intersection, so double click. And so it's just those two sides that it's selecting. So for example, here, if I want to maybe bring this down a little, I can get a little bit more curvature on there. And let's look at this in, um, okay, so now let's say I do want to add more though. So the best thing is to do is, is to look at the loops. So like this is a loop, and if I select this one and go under modify and say insert edge, which is third one down, notice it gives me this little halo of a green line, and I could go either in front or in back. And so if I did that, and now watch real carefully just for a second, I'm gonna enlarge this. As soon as I say okay, the form is gonna change a little bit because that's adding more influence. So watch, if I sit, oops, come on, Coco Million. Notice it got a little more weirdly square on the back, and that's fine, because I actually wanna do that to add this little ducky tail, um, but it's, um, What's happening is you can see this is a little straighter here and then it starts curving there because, again, if I go back to square mode, you'll see I've got this kind of curvature, but then these two are straight. Ah, get in here. And so to continue this curvature, sometimes what I'll do is I'll add this loop and then I might go back in here and just puff this out a little bit so that these have this curvature trajectory to them. Notice if I select just panels on one side, the other side, this is one side's blue and the other side's yellow, right? Um, I need to actually select both sides of this so that these four panels in the back are selected. And I'm gonna go to modify again. Uh, and this time, instead of just pulling these arrows, I'm gonna hold down uh, option as I pull this out, and you'll see what's happening is it's actually pulling more new geometry out of those two panels. And I could see that there's a little dimple here, so maybe I need to kind of rethink this a little bit. But as I pull this out, I can still use all these modification tools to squish this down and try to get this a little closer. And maybe down here, this one now, I could, since I'm getting all my panels in here, I can start to get these, um, but this part it bothers me right here. So if I looked at this in box mode, I might see that, oh yeah, that's actually kind of dimpling inward. So if I just pull that out, maybe push this one in, maybe that will help get rid of that weird dimple effect. 
So let's go back to control three. And a lot of times just looking at the highlights as I roll around can tell me how uh, smooth that is. Uh, probably in reality, um, you can delete panels. So watch, if I delete these two, because I'm like, well, maybe I don't need those. And I can't delete them when something's highlighted because it'll delete that. So I have to OK my move and just delete this without the edit mode on. I'm like, oh, that looks, that looks better, but it's not as sharp. And now I've got a three-sided panel. So that's not a good option. So Command-Z. Um, this is a five-way intersection, which isn't the best, but I could leave it. Um, and what you'll see when you do this highlight that right over the five-way thing, sometimes it gets a little bumpy, and that's where. Uh, but maybe if I push this in, yeah, that already looks better. And then um, before I go too much further, I'm going to connect the head to the body. And this is, uh, I'm going to use something that's called bridge, and it's going to connect the two but I need to have a similar number of panels. And so if I look at this, I've got one, two, three, four, and then I gotta pick four panels on the bottom. Actually, first I gotta <laughs> initiate the command. Okay, so modify bridge. So it was this in the third section down, bridge. So first activate that. Then select four panels on the bottom and the four panels on the top. And then these little arrows, they should point in the same direction and start from a similar point. Um, if they don't, you can click on the arrow to, whoops, what happened? Oh, I clicked on a panel. If you click on the arrow, you can change directions of things and you can also move them, but it's actually fine where it is, so. Um, and then in the dialogue, this is like one of our last steps here, um, it says faces and I'm just gonna do two faces and hit okay. And now my head and my body are connected together, but I need a little bit more, so this is where I'm gonna let you guys kind of poke around with this, because this doesn't look quite right, right? But if I click this inner loop that was, um, that I added and go edit that, let's just make this a lot smaller. Okay, so we're, we're getting there. Maybe I made it too small. Maybe I need to move it up a little bit. And then this back panel here, I think I just need to move this out and this up, get a little closer to that. Maybe that one point up. The front looks a little square, so I'm just going to pull just these front two holding shift and pull those out a little bit more, get a little more rounded there. And like I said, just play with this for a minute. And again, I'm going to come around and check on you guys <clears throat> um, to see if you can get it close. You don't have to get it exactly. Just, just get it close and then smooth it out. And notice, again, that head is kind of shifted back from the, the body so that it doesn't just tip forward. There's a couple little issues in my ducky, and w especially when I went into the um, box mode, and, and there's a couple things I haven't really showed you yet, so let's first, I've got the basic proportions in there, and let's turn off this canvas because it's kind of getting in my way, and where's my browser? Oh, here it is. Okay, <laughs> I don't know how this happened, but... Here's my browser, it jumped way over here and it's like a floating window now. And if I drag this over until this little green highlight, it pops, it snaps back onto my um, corner here. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna go into, now I've got, when I added the 
um, the canvas, it's got this new folder here called canvases. And if I click this open, there's only one right now. And I can turn either this off or the whole master folder off, uh, either one. And then now I can see my deck a little bit better. Now, one of the things with this quad ball is you can see that when we did that merge, this bottom edge kind of goes up and down and up and down. And, and that's fine for trying to close it off into a sphere, but we want it to make a graceful transition into this neck. And so one thing I could do, this is kind of like a little trick, is in the edit um, form, instead of trying to straighten this out manually, if you imagine if I just crush this in the horizontal dimension, it will automatically flatten out to horizontal. So if I grab this and start pushing this down, I'm basically just smashing the whole thing down until it's a uh, flat loop. And I can, you notice down here, I've got a little dialog box that says 0.093. That's, that's probably okay, but I can also just set this to zero. It's already highlighted, just put zero. And that flattens it totally. And then maybe I'll do the same thing with this next one. So I'll double click the loop. I'll uh, do the edit command, and I tried to look up to see how to activate those, but here, you could do this. Okay, so if, because the edit one is the one we use the most, right? So if you go up to um, this, uh, pop open this menu, and go up to edit, and then scroll over to the side, you'll see these three little dots. Now, do you notice mine has an E here? That's because that's the keyboard shortcut. Some of you guys lost yours, and I'm not sure why, but if we scroll over here and click on these three dots, and it says pin to, um, uh, oops, ah. uh, pin to toolbar is one thing I did, um, pin to shortcuts, and let's just change keyboard shortcut, and just, if there's nothing in there, type E, um, and it's not allowing me to change anything, I mean, uh, I didn't change anything, so. Um, and then that should give you that keyboard shortcut to just press E. Now also, if I pin it to the, um, to the toolbar, then it will be up here as one of these icons so I don't have to click and um, find it. I can just click it, it's right here, edit form. And then lastly, any command that you just did, if you right click, it shows you your last commands, and if you right click off of your object, and so edit forms at the top. So those are multiple different ways to get there, because that's the command I use 90% of the time. Okay, so let's grab this second loop and do that same flattening thing. So I'm gonna press my E, and I'm gonna grab this top horizontal bar and squish that down and just type in the letter zero. And then now if I'm in this, um, uh, box mode, I can see this makes this kind of unflattering transition. And so I think I'm just going to pull that one little point out. And, and I'm always modifying in either points, surfaces, or lines. And I go back and forth between all of them. Um, so like here, if I rotate this around, I could see that this panel, I'm just going to highlight it here for a minute and go back to ortho view. That's totally flat in this dimension, so I probably want a little bit more curvature. And, and this is, again, just from kind of playing with this, but I'm going to pull this whole second um, uh, visible edge just by clicking on each one of these and pulling them in a little bit, and that will ensure that the back has some curve to it. Now this front, like if I look at this panel, that looks pretty good, this one. This one gets a little tight up in here, and so maybe I'll just pull this little point over, and I flatten this out, so maybe instead of using this, um, uh, the square, I'll just use the arrow to push that back to, maybe I'll even do this one so they, kind of go transition. And then maybe this transition needs to be back a little further. And I'm just trying to smooth everything out in this mode. The other thing I notice is that these rubber duckies, the bottom is, not only is it flat, but there's a quicker transition there. So maybe I'll just grab this whole um, bottom uh, loop 
and pull it down a little bit so that'll give me a tighter transition on the bottom and maybe this little part of the um, Uh, and he's got like a little bit of a hump in the back. So I'm doing all this in the box mode. Oh, and right here, here's another point that I can see should be in further. And again, I'm just trying to smooth, make the transitions um, spaced a little more evenly where it needs, or where it, uh, smooth out where it needs to be smooth and tighten up where it needs to be tight. So um, also this, um, this little look at button down here on the bottom is kind of handy. Whoops, I thought that was, oh sorry, it's this one, fit. If you, get, if you lose your model, it's way off in space, just hit fit. Okay, so let's look at him again, see if he's any smoother. So control three. So see that neck transition now? It's got a nice highlight going around it, but maybe, maybe it's just a little too tight. So I'll just pull that down just a smidget. And this is where those little micro adjustments like seem futile, but it actually makes a big difference. And, and this is kind of weird. I don't know if you guys can see this weird glitchiness on the, that's not really in the model. Sometimes it just has a rendering error. Um, I think in uh, under utilities, if I enable better performance, sometimes that changes or makes that go away. But um, display, no, better performance. But don't worry about that. That's not really there. It's just a display issue. OK, so let's say I got pretty close. I can do. Um, one more thing, I've got, you know, the basic form I think looks pretty good. The head is, a, is, is relatively round. I'm gonna select the whole bottom and use the soften command just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. And so when you wanna select multiple panels, you can of course hold shift and click through them. That gets pretty tedious. If I click one panel and hold shift and up arrow, it will grow that selection out. But notice it's kind of weird on the other side. So I have to think about what I'm trying to do. Like typically I'll do something like, uh, let's say, if I wanted to get this whole um, bottom, I might select all the bottom panels and then arrow up and climb up the body until I get to a point where um, uh, right up to the neck uh, and or I can select either by dragging from left to right and notice this didn't quite get everything and sometimes um, it won't select on both sides so if if you click on the select button up here and go down to selection filters and make sure it says select through is checked. And since I'm here, let me just show you what happens if I change this select all to off and then go down what we're, <laughs> this is a, a bad interface, but T-splines is the underlying architecture in this, which is really sub-D modeling. You see down here it says T-spline body, T-spline edges, T-spline faces, and T-spline vertices. That's what we're doing. But nowhere in here, it says form. It doesn't say T-splines, but it's talking about the same thing. And also, they're used to call this sculpt. So sometimes in some of the menu boxes, you'll see sculpt. So just letting you know that's all the same stuff. But now, if I go to select, I can actually change what I'm choosing. And I could just say T-spline edges. And then now I can't select any panels, only the edges. And sometimes when you're trying to get like some little tricky point or something and it's selecting the wrong thing, you can go through here and like I could say T-spline body. And now if I click this, I can only select the whole body. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back and turn select all on and make sure select through is there. And if I drag from left or sorry, yeah, left to right, 
that selects everything that's fully connected and if I go right to left that selects anything that I'm touching. So you notice this one, I'm selecting pretty much the same grouping, but it will add those upper rings because I selected a part of it. Whereas if I go this way, I have to fully contain the selection and it's only got those lower ones. So I'm gonna go back and do it this way. <clears throat> Except for I'm missing one little tiny piece. So I'll just hold on shift and get that. So I got the whole lower body selected and now I'm going to go into the modify and say smooth. And, and you'll, you'll have to like pull this and let go to see what it's doing. Um, and you know, a lot of times it does it too much, but a little smoothing can't hurt. <clears throat> and th what that'll try to do is even out those, the spacing in between everything. The other thing you should do pretty regularly is um, double click the body and choose this under utilities, repair body. And when you do this, it will show you, oops, sorry, hold on. Uh, star points are anything that are more or less than four intersections. And there's a lot of them on here. Um, but again, that's okay, you just, it's showing you where they are. Um, uh, the, where's the, uh, n-gons are anything that's less than four-sided panel, but those are all four-sided, so that's okay. Um, and you could just hit auto repair and okay. And, and sometimes weird little glitchy stuff happens, like I'll show you here, I'll make a glitch. I'm just gonna add a line right here. I'm gonna add a, a, a panel, or not panel, an edge. And notice I did not select through. I, I, I didn't select the whole loop. I just selected this one, which is mirrored. And now I'm gonna say insert edge like I did before. And I'll pull this down a little bit. And it looks okay, And then, but watch what happens when I say okay. You'll see that this transition here gets a little bit weird. So watch, ready, one, two, three, boop. See how his head got this kind of lump in here, or this equator? Because these, these lines that just end in a T-spline typically put tension in weird places. So I usually just don't allow anything to be a T-spline. And so here, I'm gonna go repair body again. And you'll see there's a little letter T, and if I click that, it turns that back into star point, and you notice that it relaxed all that geometry. Um, there's one more way to do that, um, and I'm gonna go back, so that's a T point there. A shortcut, if you have a whole bunch of them, is now to go make uniform, and this also goes through and kind of relaxes all the tension, everything, and it, they just added this nice little button, convert T points. So. If I click that, it's going to change that also and check through the whole body. And some of these lines may move around a little bit because it's trying to relax all the tension and get you a little bit smoother body. Um, now, I, I may have wanted this because, um, you know, maybe I'm going to pull a little duck bill out of here or something or other. Um, so maybe I will leave it for now. I'm going to get rid of that extra line I put in there. and. <clears throat> And it, just stop for a second and watch. I'm gonna show you one really important thing. I'm gonna pull out a panel out of here. I've got symmetry on, so theoretically, it seems like I should just be able to use the edit form, hold down option, and pull out both of those. But you see what it's doing? It's pulling out two individual pieces. So even though the symmetry's on, I have to select both of those so that they're both blue, and then go back to my edit form go back to my option and pull out. And notice also, I just pulled this out. I could do a lot of tweaking to this before I let go. Um, I can pull it in, tweak it up, uh, rotate it. And I'm, I'm kind of deviating from the underlying duck. <clears throat> hmm. 
And I'm gonna turn my canvas back off, just see if. So I'm gonna go under um, modify. Way down at the bottom it says appearance. Click on that. You got this little window pop up. And then um, I'm gonna scroll down to all these folders. And I think, let's try plastic. The plastic's kind of weird. It doesn't always behave properly. So I'm gonna try opaque plastic. And notice there's, well, there is actually, here's yellow glossy. Boop. And I just drag that over here and drop it onto him. And now I've got the, the base color. We'll, we'll add the little um, bill color in a different operation. Um, but now I can kind of look at it and see what it looks like in this color. But those rubber duckies are always kind of like this matte, fuzzy plastic. Matte matte. What was that? There's a yellow matte. Okay, well actually I'm gonna show you if you wanted to make it more matte, just double click on it. And the roughness is what makes it more, um, and so notice that, watch the highlights. They kind of fuzz out to the point where there's like nothing left. So you want a little bit of a highlight. If I go all the way down here, you can actually see reflections in it, but, um, so this is just personal preference of like what, how soft do you want that? Uh, Corey is right, there is a yellow matte right below. So I could also try that. That's very matte. So let's see what they've got, uh, 0.7. Mine's at 0 0.238, 0 0.23, let's call it. I kind of like with a little bit of a highlight on there as opposed to the totally matte, which almost looks like a solid color. <clears throat> And um, some of these materials uh, will have a, let's go to, I think, because this is my computer, I think I've downloaded everything, but um, here we go. So I'm just, I'm picking a random one. This is wood solid, finished, and there's this little arrow, like if I try to grab this, this I'd love if they would tell us it's not working. Why is it not working? The other one's worked, because this little arrow means I have to download it first, so I gotta, click on that and then let that little blue arrow disappear and then now I can drag it over there and I got a little wood ducky. <clears throat> and notice all the materials I've tried or I've used are in here so I can still go back and actually okay so I'm going to add I am going to finish this up because I'm doing the video. So I'll add the eyes and split the beak off and change the color, and then I'll stop and come around, OK? So don't worry if your um, uh, guy's not perfect right now. i got to close this. Let's make some eyeballs. So if I go back to my canvas and just kind of get a sense of where they are, about right up in here. And um, I'll turn that off. So I'm going to make a tiny, I'm just going to make a little sphere and use that for his eye and just let it intersect the body. So I'm going to go create another quad ball. I'm going to click on this center plane and I'm going to make this eye off of the um, body just so I can see it because if I click anywhere in the body, it will kind of disappear and I won't be able to see it because it will be hidden by the body. And usually I make the eye a little bit bigger than I want it because most of it's going to get buried in the body. And I'm going to, before I even do anything, I'm going to change the color of this one too. So modify appearance. And we'll just change this to, oh, here, some black color. Now, this would be great for a cyclops, but he needs two eyes, so. I'm gonna go to the front view now and move it roughly where I want it. This, this takes a little bit of going back and forth. And then, again, you gotta watch this because this is, um, if I double click on this sphere and I use this symmetry, or in this case, say um, mirror duplicate, 
And then it's asking me what mirror plane, I've got that body selected, I gotta select this and then the mirror plane is kind of buried inside the body, but let's click that. So now I got two eyes. And then if I use my modify now, I can push both of these kind of in and around until I get them more or less. Let's call that good. And now the last piece, this is the little simple duck. This is not, I don't have any wings. We don't have the beak separated and quacking. This is the like little basic guy. Um, now I want to uh, change the beak to a different color. Now I could do that in here with the appearance and just, uh, and this is kind of weird, but it doesn't really matter what color you choose. So I'm just gonna choose red because it's kind of close and throw it up in my, and then I'll double click it and change it to more of an orange color. Uh, too, I'm too yellow. And instead of, uh, way up at the top it says apply to bodies, I can also apply this to faces. And so notice I can go and just drop this onto these individual faces. So that's one way I could do it. It's not ideal because it's kind of got this square uh, corners. And the other problem is as soon as I want to finish this and hit finish form, that's gonna ruin that intersection. So I'll have to go back in and redo that. But let's, let's do this a different way. Um, I'm gonna finish form. And again, I'm doing this kind of quick because I just want to stop this video and not come around and help you guys. But uh, so once I hit that finish form, let me go back again, which is this green checkbox way at the end of a browser. Um, you'll notice that all the panels change and it looks different. It looks similar, but it looks different. And there's all the blue or purple icons have disappeared. And I can't, where's my edit form? It's gone because it's not a form body anymore. Now it's a solid B rep body. Uh, and that's what I want. Um, and then I'm going to go to uh, create a sketch and select this side plane. And I'm just going to make a simple line, uh, in this case, a uh, spline, a control point spine. And this, I'm just going to click three points. and adjust the points until they get kind of where I want the split to be. I'll finish that sketch, go to split body, and choose the body, and then the splitting tool is that line, and hit OK. And so now this beak is actually a separate body in my bodies folders, I, and I can color that differently. And I could drop the color right in the browser too. And oops, I don't know why one of his eyes changed colors, but let's re-change that. And then I'm gonna set this up to render and then I'll stop and come around. Okay, so let's get him some position. And then I'm gonna go from design mode to render mode. And I'm gonna close this gallery thing. Get him looking kinda good. And there's, there's plenty of uh, render options, but I'm just gonna do this in render, uh, canvas render. <coughs> and while this is resing up, I'm going to stop the video, so...